there are a whole lot of powerful heroes and villains in the Invincible universe, and a whole lot of wannabes who really aren't that powerful. And today well, we're going to take a look at all of them, ranking each and every hero and villain from the Invincible comics from weakest to strongest. So let's get to it. What's up guys, this is Danko. I do fight breakdowns, power ranking videos, or more deep dives into your favorite characters and franchises with new videos every week. So if that seems great to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button if you want to, or hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Machine Head ran the LA branch of the Order, able to calculate the entire criminal organization with his cybernetic mind. All things considered though, he's not really that impressive. Shrinking Ray was a former member of the Guardians of the Globe, and just like his name might suggest, his only real superpower was shrinking. Knockout is a member of the Guardians, representing Canada on the team. Her powers stem from a pair of special boxing gloves that grant her superhuman strength and durability. We don't know if they're magical or technological, but either way, the boxing gloves give her the ability to punch anything with some amazing superhuman strength. Donald Ferguson is Cecil Stedman's assistant, his contact with the Guardians of the Globe and an agent of the Global Defense Agency. And oh yeah, he's also a super powerful robot. Tether Tyrant was one of the Machine Head's top henchmen complete with 30 elastic tendrils that spawn out from his chest. Another hired bodyguard from Machine Head, Magmaniac, is able to turn his body into molten magma, making him very powerful and very hot. Titan is the leader of a supervillain mob, working his way up the criminal ladder from the bottom to the top. He's able to encase his entire body in stone, giving him superhuman strength and durability. El Chubacabra is a member of the Guardians of the Globe and has been one of Mexico's greatest superheroes for years. While he doesn't seem to have any superhuman strength or durability, he can go into berserker mode and grow claws that can do some serious damage. An Australian member of the Guardians, the Boomerang is an expert in using exploding boomerangs. He's also got a slight telekinetic power which he can use to control his boomerangs. Darkwing was a member of the Guardians, was very similar to Batman, a human in peak physical form, a master in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and always carrying around a massive arsenal of gadgets. Aquarius was the King of Atlantis, and a member of the Guardians, before getting brutally murdered by Omniman. Aquarius can breathe underwater, obviously it was his natural habitat, and he was incredibly skilled with his trident and water powers. Octoboss is a super strong octopus villain, complete with a group of followers called the Squidmen that assist him with crimes. He's incredibly strong and tough, complete with eight powerful tentacles, so like an octopus. When the original Darkwing died, his sidekick Nightboy took over the mantle, became the new Darkwing, and he really relied on his Shadowverse powers, which allowed him to walk into shadows, teleport, and trap enemies inside the shadows. Best Tiger is a member of the Guardians from China with unparalleled gunslinging abilities. He's the world's best marksman, able to shoot anything, no matter how big or small. He can ricochet bullets or even shoot with complete accuracy with his eyes closed. Shapesmith is a Martian on Earth, where he decides to become a superhero and join the Guardians of the Globe. Like all Martians, Shapesmith is a metamorph, able to shift the atoms and molecules of his body and transform into anything that he wants. He can also use his ability to greatly increase his own physical power, too. Kid Thor is a superhero working for Capes Incorporated. With his magic enchanted hammer, well, he can use it to swing around and smash opponents. A lot like the real Thor. Outrun is a super speedster from South Africa. 
one of the newest members of the Guardians. And although we don't really know her top speed, she is fast enough to run across water. She's even able to run from New York to Iowa in just seconds. Gary Hampton is a CEO who was mauled by a werewolf while out on a family vacation. Deciding to use his evil curse for good, he became the astounding Wolfman. While in werewolf form, he possesses superhuman senses, strength, agility, stamina, and healing. And through extensive training, well, he now has almost full control over his transformation. Multipol is Duplicate's slightly crazy twin brother. And just like his sister, Multipol has the same powers the ability to copy himself at will. Speaking of Duplicate, well, she's the wife of the Immortal, the member of the Guardians of the Globe. And like her twin brother, she's able to create identical physical duplicates of herself at will. Martian Man was an original member of the Guardians of the Globe. And a lot like Martian Manhunter, he's able to shapeshift and control each and every atom in his body. Green Ghost was one of the original members of the Guardians. He had a magic talisman that when he swallowed it, turned him green and tangible, thus the name Green Ghost. Born to an extremely poor family, Rex Sloan ended up working as an assassin in order to try and make some money. However, after meeting Adam Eve, Rex ended up becoming a hero himself, joining the teen team and eventually the Guardians of the Globe. Rex Blode has the ability to alter the chemical makeup of inorganic material, causing them to become unstable and explode. War Woman is one of the founders of the Guardians of the Globe, and one of their most powerful members, based off of Wonder Woman from DC Comics. Doc Seismic can create powerful disruption waves with his wrist gauntlets which can cause earth-shattering damage all around him. However, he's still just a mid-villain with an overall lackluster career in crime. Black Samson is one of the few members of both incarnations of the Guardians of the Globe, wearing a power suit that grants him superhuman strength, invulnerability, and enhanced stamina and speed. Scott's sister was working as an office assistant at an advertising agency when Invincible and Omni-Man tore through the building. He blames Invincible for the death of her and his own family and seeks revenge, becoming Powerplex. He gets his powers from the suit absorbing energy around him, which he can then fire out as energy blasts. Bulletproof is a member of the Guardians of the Globe, and even took on the invincible man and even took on the invincible mantle for a little while too. He's got the ability to absorb kinetic energy within his body. And at full charge, he's incredibly strong, superhumanly fast, and nearly indestructible. Red Rush was one of the original members of the Guardians of the Globe, and just like the Flash, has the ability to move at some amazing superhuman speeds. Russ Livingston is a NASA astronaut who became a host for an alien race called the Sequids, a powerful hive-like race that Russ can now control, or more accurately, now control Russ. Their greatest power is their sheer numbers, as they can overwhelm Invincible and the Guardians of the Globe. The Reanimen are cybernetic monsters created by the mad scientist D.A. Sinclair. After being defeated by Invincible, Sinclair and his Reanimen were recruited by Cecil Stedman to work for the U.S. government. The Reanimen are incredibly strong and powerful, powerful enough to fight against Invincible, and Cecil even ended up ordering countless Reanimen made out of dead alternate versions of Invincible. The blue-skinned hulking duo, the Mahler twins, are actually one person. One is a clone of the other, and they'll constantly argue over who's the original. Physically, the Maulers are incredibly strong and powerful. They're even able to hurt Invincible. But on top of that, 
They're also geniuses and the utmost experts when it comes to cloning. Cecil Stedman is the head of the Global Defense Agency and is in charge of the Guardians of the Globe and is a man hell-bent on protecting the world regardless of the cost. He might just be a normal guy, but as the head of the GDA, he has a whole world of resources at his disposal, making him a serious threat. Brit is completely invulnerable, and while he might not have any other powers, no super strength or anything else, complete invulnerability is nothing to scoff at. Monster Girl is a hero that can turn into a troll-like monster on command. She's actually an adult, but every time she transforms, she gets younger and younger. So now she looks like a child. As the monster though, she is incredibly strong, incredibly tough, and can instantly turn into a monster at will. The Immortal is a member of the Guardians of the Globe and was the only member to survive Omni-Man's slaughter of the original team. And that's because the Immortal has the power of everlasting life. But he's also got superhuman strength, speed, and durability. So much so that he's been able to fight against Omni-Man several times in the past. Universa is a warrior queen from a far off planet and she found Earth to be rich with the energy that her people needed to survive. So she decided to come here and take it by any means necessary. With the staff of leadership, she can shoot out powerful energy beams capable of leveling entire cities around her. Liu Kan was one of the Viltrumites who attacked on Naiman on the planet Thraxa, but eventually, well, he and the other Viltrumites end up designating Omni-Man as their ruler. Still, Liu Kan, while a pretty powerful Viltrumite himself, able to fight against Nolan and Alan the Alien, he still isn't the strongest Viltrumite out there, which is why we couldn't really give him a higher place on our list. Angstrom Levy was a man with the ability to travel to alternate realities, who ended up in a horrible accident and permanently disfigured. He blames Invincible for this, went on to become one of his most dangerous villains. Like we said, Angstrom Levy possesses the unique ability to move between dimensions. However, the catch is he can only move within fixed space. So if he steps from one dimension and into another, and the second dimension has a gigantic hole in the ground, well, he's likely falling into that giant hole in the ground. Oliver Grayson is the son of Omni-Man, the alien half-brother of Invincible. He's a member of an alien race that has a far shorter lifespan and grows much quicker than humans, yet his father's DNA managed to delay his aging and gave him incredible powers. He's incredibly strong, fast, and tough, just like every other Viltrumite. But Oliver actually doesn't have the same high potential as his half-brother Mark, mostly because his mother being a Thraxan means they aren't quite as compatible with Viltrumites as humans are. Thula is a fierce member of the Viltrumites and is known for her long hair, which is actually her signature weapon. She's one of the Viltrumites who saw Thrag become regent thousands of years ago. She fought hard in the war against the Coalition of Planets, was able to even fight Battle Beast. General Craig is the Viltrumite who gave Invincible the task of conquering the Earth. He appears to be second in command in the Empire, directly behind Thrag himself. But like a lot of other Viltrumites, would eventually join up with Omni-Man after his rise to power. Tech Jacket is a human named Zack Thompson who came into possession of an alien suit of armor, one of the most powerful weapons in the universe, and it granted him plenty of extraordinary abilities. He has superhuman physical abilities, but on top of that, can create whatever weapon he can think of in an instant. A super strong and super ferocious race of monsters, 
Ragnars are one of the few threats to the Viltrumites anywhere in the universe. They're one of the strongest species ever recorded, and may actually be even stronger than Viltrumites, although this might also be because of their feral nature, as they'll attack anything around them. A genius hiding behind a powerful mechanical suit, Robot was a former leader of both the Teen Team and the Guardians of the Globe. Robot, aka Rudy, is able to control his suits with just a thought, and some of them are seriously, seriously powerful. He's also built countless number of suits, meaning that Robot can command a small army with just a thought. Adam Eve has the power of transmutation, meaning that she's capable of transforming matter into anything that she wants. As long as she knows how something is made up, she can change it into something else. And since she's got a great understanding of chemistry and science, her abilities are really only limited by her imagination, and she can make atoms obey her every will. Thaddeus is the founder of the Coalition of Planets, the planets standing up against the Viltrum Empire, but unbeknownst to most, He's actually a Viltrumite himself, all working in secret and trying his best to defend other planets and people from the tyrannical rule of his own race. Thaddeus was a formidable character who could pose a serious problem to any fighter out there. I mean, he teamed up with Omni Man and Invincible and freaking destroyed a planet. Okay, sure, he wasn't able to defeat Thrag. He simply wasn't that strong anymore, and old age got to him, but he was still a force to be reckoned with. Anissa was the Viltrumite who was sent to Earth in an attempt to kind of trick or seduce Mark, and get Mark to help the Viltrumite Empire take over the planet. After her rejection though, obviously Mark isn't going to turn on the Earth, well she becomes a bit angry, and later she even sexually assaulted him in order to have a child. Five years later though, Anissa has married a human herself, had a daughter, and has gone on to raise her son, Marky. And later, she actually ends up defending the Earth, sacrificing herself to save Mark and Eve. She was a very powerful Viltrumite, and definitely the most powerful female Viltrumite warrior we ever saw. Space Racer is a member of the Coalition of Planets, an alien who possesses a gun that can kill Viltrumites. He's been able to fight against Omni Man before, and proved crucial in the war against the Viltrum Empire, and even helped to destroy the planet Viltrum. Omnipotus is an all-powerful, malevolent villain who possesses almost limitless cosmic powers. He has powerful reality warping abilities, can reshape matter and energy, bend time and space, even rewrite the laws of physics. He's basically able to change the face of the world by pure force of will, even claiming to have laid waste to an entire star system before. Dinosaurus believes that mankind is destroying the planet, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to turn this around. He's incredibly strong and powerful, able to go one-on-one -on -one with Invincible, and even managed to critically injure the cosmically powered villain Omnipotus during their fight. Invincible definitely has its fair share of gore and violence, but I don't think there's a more brutal or bloody fighter than Conquest. It's a whole different ball game when he shows up. With a nasty scar across his face and a sick robot arm, there's no doubt that Conquest has been in his fair share of fights and is battle tested. Since he was only injured from the Scourge virus, and he was even older than the multi thousand year old Omni Man. Conquest is quite possibly the most experienced fighter in the entire Viltrum Empire, and given the fact that he had never lost a planet in his entire life, well, when he showed up on Earth, things didn't look 
too optimistic, and he showed Invincible what true power is. But after nearly killing Invincible, while well, Conquest was finally beaten by Adam Eve when she went nuclear, leaving half of his body vaporized. However, not even that was enough to put him down, as he escaped from a prison of 400 tons of steel just days later, then went on to have a rematch with Invincible that left Mark on the brink of death for months on end. Ultimately, Invincible managed to win their fight, but it was so close that one wrong move, it could have easily gone in Conquest favor. Omni-Man definitely wasn't the peaceful protector of Earth that he always pretended to be, and really proved that by nearly killing his own son and destroying cities in the process. And during that fight, well, there was a whole lot of power at play. Even the very first punch thrown by Omni-Man sent skyscrapers cracking in half, left thousands dead. Onnami would go on to only further demonstrate his power and superiority over most other Viltrumites, sometimes taking on two or three at the same time without going down. And on top of that, for most of the series, until the very, very end, Onnami was much stronger and faster than Invincible, constantly providing a higher bar for Mark to strive towards. Alan the Alien is a Unopen, a race of one-eyed aliens that escaped total destruction by the Viltrumites. After several rounds of serious experimentation, Alan was physically enhanced enough to where he could battle one-on-one -on -one against Viltrumites and even powerful enough to kill them. On top of that, whatever doesn't kill him only makes him stronger, even more powerful. And since he's already survived things that should have killed him, maybe nothing can actually kill him, and will just continue to get more and more powerful. Battle Beast is one of the most powerful warriors to have ever lived. He nearly killed Invincible and almost defeated the Guardians of the Globe, all in search of a worthy adversary. He's one of the most skilled fighters to have ever lived, and his mastery of every known fighting style, his own unique fighting ability, coupled with his raw physical power and unlimited endurance, all combined to make Battle Beast one of the most powerful and formidable opponents anywhere in the universe. Invincible might have started out as a hero newbie, but by the end of the story, there was no doubt that he had earned his spot as one of the most powerful Viltrumites in the universe. Sure, it might have started out with On the Man being able to punch him around the globe without a second thought, but Invincible's powers only grew over time, and he routinely proved himself to be able to fight the best of the best. There have been a few statements comparing his own growing power with his dad's. By the time Invincible beat the legendary Conquest, it's clear that Invincible has surpassed Omni Man. Now, notably, Omni Man did win their arm wrestling match towards the end of the series. But there definitely is some ambiguity surrounding Invincible, whether he intentionally lost or not. Regardless, the hero's raw showings are the best in the entire series, and only one Viltrumite is able to outrank him in terms of raw physical power. Without question, Grand Regent Thrag is the strongest Viltrumite in the entire series. Claiming rule over all his people, the Viltrumite's philosophy of survival of the fittest and might makes right really speaks to just how strong Thrag had to be in order to rule Viltrum, and believing in that philosophy, maybe more so than anyone else, Thrag proved time and again why he's one of the strongest beings in the galaxy. Other Viltrumites can hurt their hands just by punching him, and Thrag fought Battle Beast for days, 
despite starting the fight with some pretty severe injuries. On three different occasions, he beat on my man nearly to death, all while coming out of the fight relatively unscathed. In the end, even Invincible couldn't take him down alone. It took the combined efforts of Robot and literally fighting in the sun for Thrag to taste defeat for the very first time. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're going to have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.